So hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Unpacking Possibility. I'm your host, Tracy Stein, as always. I am so happy to be here with you. And tonight's episode is a little bit different. It's actually a tribute to someone I have respected and admired and learned so much from over the years, and that is Dr. Mona Lisa Schultz. If the name sounds familiar, it's because Mona Lisa had a number of best-selling books, including with um, Louise Hay, a legend herself. And Mona Lisa was a neuropsychiatrist. She had an MD in psychiatry and a PhD in neuroscience. She was a board-certified clinician, but beyond that, she was a medical intuitive. And Mona Lisa talked about the intersection of mental health, physical health, spiritual health, our social world, and much more in a way that I think was different and and went even beyond what had been out there before. Um, She was such a rare being. And when she passed away a few months ago, I started to record an episode and it, it just didn't feel like the time. But now it does, because I I really believe that not only has her work inspired and helped me, helped me to be a more thoughtful clinician and just more alert and aware about the connections between certain things in my own life, but I I think her work is invaluable in general. I think it's helpful in, in thinking about patients if you're a clinician. I think it's helpful in understanding each of our own stuff, because how many of us have health issues that even if we've gone to a number of wonderful healthcare providers, it's been hard to kind of find relief. Mona Lisa's insights sometimes provided a key that felt like the the aha moment or the missing piece. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about that tonight. Um, You know, Mona Lisa, again, had very well researched book. She had an incredible sense of humor, but she was so smart and she could articulate these otherwise hard to understand concepts in a way that really anybody could understand. She made you feel like she knew you. She made you feel understood and like you could do things to help yourself, regardless of whatever else you were already doing. So, you know, again, Mona Lisa was exquisitely able to look at a person. And by that, I mean, psychically, because as a medical intuitive, she didn't have to be with you in person. And she rarely was when she did readings. She didn't have to know anything about you. And she'd been doing readings long before there was an internet. She was able to have keen insight into things. Honestly, nobody could Google. And she was uncannily accurate about pinpointing the issues in our energy centers or correlating them with our energy centers and looking at physical things, emotional things, how these tied into our relationships, our personal histories, the current contexts of somebody's life. And I'll give some examples in a moment, because I know this might be a little bit challenging for some people to kind of follow, but stay with me on this. So Mona Lisa, just to give a little bit of background, Before she was a neuropsychiatrist and practicing medical intuitive, she was an uncanny intuitive, but she also struggled with physical illnesses herself her whole life. So please know that what I'm not saying here and what she wouldn't say is, well, if you you just have a better attitude or become more spiritual, you won't need to see your MD or that you, you know, all of your physical or other health problems will be gone. That's I'm not saying that, and that's not what she would say either. And I think her own physical ailments really taught her so much about the need to keep taking a look and keep looking at ourselves and to pay attention to what was working for us and what wasn't. So she had narcolepsy and she had a seizure disorder. And 
these were things that even though she was extremely bright, really often interfered with her education when she was an undergraduate and she was in medical school. She used to run to try to keep herself awake. And, you know, she would say, I don't know if I had fallen asleep or had a seizure or what, but at one point, I believe she was in her late teens or early 20s, she was jogging and actually was hit by a truck. She has no memory of how it happened. I think she was thrown 85 feet and had multiple fractures and broken bones. And yet, despite this, She was able to, with the help of both conventional medicine, obviously she was in the hospital and had great medical care, but looking into things like meditation, affirmations, guided imagery, dietary adjustments, how could she work to enhance her body and mind's chances for healing? And she was able to get through medical school and a PhD doing that. She was able to work in her field. She was able to be a gifted medical intuitive and a well-respected author despite these challenges. She had other health challenges as well. But the reason I'm mentioning that is because I'm not trying to insinuate again that we have to be born into perfect health to achieve better health. And I think that's something that she would say as well. So, um, you know, what Mona Lisa Schultz did, that was one of the things that really got my attention when her first book came out in the late 90s, I think, was talk about the energy centers, but in a way that she could tie them to the then still newer uh, science of psychoneuroimmunology and psychoneuroendocrinology, looking at how our emotional states, our stress levels, and so forth affected things like our immunity, our ability to heal from injury or illness, and so forth. And we know, actually, that our emotional states, our levels of stress, how we feed our bodies, how we rest, absolutely impacts our health. And in fact, I won't go into too much detail on this because it's outside of my personal area of expertise, but even the science of epigenetics, it talks about how, yes, we have genes that predispose us to a number of things, positive and sometimes not so positive. But again, our emotional states our mental states, our levels of stress, the contexts we find ourselves in, and the way we take care of our bodies can actually affect whether those genes are turned on or not for health problems and so forth. So she was really ahead of her time. She was really talking about things that we're learning more and more about the impact, again, of how all these things work together. But she also brought in the energy um, language of the chakras or the energy centers. And what I would like to do now is just kind of give you a brief overview of how Mona Lisa would talk about the chakras. And as I do this, think about your own body, your own health, your own mind, your own history, the the challenges that you have had, and see if any of this resonates with you. So the first energy center for anyone who's a little newer to the um, chakra talk would be your root center located relatively around the base of your spine, roughly, not exactly. Um, But Mona Lisa would say this corresponded to the health of your family of origin, your groups that helped you to have a sense of identity and belonging. So if it's not your family, maybe it's some other group that is a significant part of your identity. Um, And it's the group that gives you a sense of safety and security or not. If that is out of balance and you are not able to feel safe, secure, like you belong, Mona Lisa and other people who've talked about the um, chakra correlations with health, um, because she's not the only one. But Mona Lisa would say, well, the first chakra is associated with systems of your body, like your skin, larger organs like your skin, your immune system, your 
bones and muscles and connective tissue, your blood and so forth. So if this is out of balance and you are not able to feel safe and secure in your small group, either now or more likely from the very beginning, you might be somebody who struggles with things like a lot of fevers, or you might be the person with immune issues where some bug goes around and you get it, you get every single one, and it might be for twice as long as somebody else. Um, you might have chronic fatigue issues. You might have psoriasis. And you might have something like rheumatoid arthritis and so forth. And I'm just going to say as a disclaimer, Mona Lisa would not say that your family of origin issues caused your rheumatoid arthritis or that your rheumatoid arthritis caused your family of origin issues. But what she would say is like, I'm going to use my language, think of things like spokes on a wheel. Most things in our life have um, a lot of different factors, right? Different spokes on the same wheel of your life or your health. And she would say that each affects the other. And I agree with that. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. So that's the first energy center. The second one would be your navel chakra um, uh, located a little bit below your actual navel. And what she would say is the primary associations with this chakra are issues with money, right? And issues with love, partnership. Think about that way. But partnership in terms of an intimate relationship, that type of love. And if this is out of balance, and you'll know if it is, because you'll either have a lot of money worries, or you'll make a lot of money, but you can't hold on to it, or you'll find that your relationships are out of balance, your sexual or intimate relationships are out of balance in one way or another. Um, she would say you may be predisposed to hormonal issues or lower back issues, lower back being um, associated specifically more with money issues. Um, she would say that you might have other issues with your sexual and reproductive organs, your bladder, your prostates, and so forth. This this overview is going to be a very brief snapshot, and I'll tell you some of Mona Lisa's books that you can read for more information and to go deeper into these um, areas if they interest you. So that's the second chakra. Your third chakra, your solar plexus chakra, just below where your ribs meet, that would have to do with your feeling of confidence and empowerment or lack thereof. Um, so you would know this is out of balance because you might either feel like you need to control everyone and everything in your life, or you might tend to overpower other people, or conversely, you might feel pretty disempowered and insecure and like you can't achieve the things you want to. Um, other challenges associated with this energy center feel like you need to take care of anyone and everyone, especially people in your family. And when you see children who grow up to be um, everyone's caretaker, chances are they were everyone's caretaker even when they were young. Um, and what happens is, um, you know, organs and systems linked to the third chakra, the solar plexus chakra would be things like stomach issues, liver or gallbladder issues, pancreas issues, indigestion, other digestive issues, um, weight issues. And remember, weight issues can be too much or too little, right? Too restrictive or too um, unrestricted uh, body image issues and so forth. And I would say, actually, to some extent, anger and anxiety, you can feel them here, certainly in your body. And when you feel either disempowered or over controlling, notice the kinds of things that come up, notice the emotions that come up. Okay. So, the fourth chakra is your heart chakra, located right in the center of your chest. Um, this is associated with the organs of your heart, your breasts, your lungs. Um, being able to give and receive love in a balanced way is also associated with this energy center. So 
the ability to feel nurtured. Like there's balance between the love you give out and the love you receive. Everybody's met people who are over givers, but they can't receive. I mean, even things like a compliment might be hard for them to receive, right? Or they can't let anyone take care of them. But again, related to the um, solar plexus issue of needing to control other people or needing to take care of everybody and anyone. Um, things can relate to more than one energy center, and I think they often do. But when this is out of balance, not only are you having those things kind of emotionally or relationally, but you might find that you have breast health issues, including possibly cancer, heart health issues, lung issues like asthma or allergies, and so forth. Um, again, anger, grief, dependency, this, these can be in more than one energy center and other syst other people's systems might be different. I'm also interjecting a little bit of my own clinical observations here, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. But this probably is starting to make sense if you think about it, right? And again, we're not saying causal, but we're saying isn't it interesting how there can be an association? If you have a heart problem, you need to go treat it just as an aside with your doctor and you know what that looks like for you might be different from what it looks like for somebody else, depending on what's going on for you. But what we'll get to in a moment is that you will want to do other work, emotional work, spiritual work around these heart issues as well. So number five, the fifth energy center, the throat chakra in the hollow of your throat, this is thought of sometimes as the minor seed of the will. Um, your expression is thought to be uh, centered in your throat chakra. Your ability to listen, your ability to feel heard, right? And to have balance between the two. Um, Ear issues, sore throats, tonsillitis, mouth issues, jaw issues, teeth issues. Do you feel like you're yelling a lot because you feel like you're not heard? Or do you feel like you're checking out when people are telling you things you don't want to hear? Are you the person who is so quiet in relationships that you just never really show up, you're more of a receptacle sometimes for other people. That's more of an extreme, right? But where you feel like you can't take up that space. Or are you somebody who can't listen and just talks and talks and talks and talks compulsively? That's an unbalanced throat center, right? Um, your sixth chakra, sixth energy center, third eye. And in, incidentally, when you are very intuitive, you may notice that you see a lot of images on the screen of your mind or you have prophetic dreams and things like that. That's a third eye thing. Um, your third eye, though, corresponds to your eyes and your brain um, and your perception, your ability to take in and process information, your vision your ability to concentrate, and basic mental health issues. But again, not I would say mental health issues are especially things that are related to more than one energy center. Um, so the seventh chakra, your crown, which actually sits above your head several inches, this is what connects you to the divine, if you believe in the divine, it connects you to your purpose in life, a sense of meaning, a sense of your spirituality, your direction. Um, when this is out of balance, what Mona Lisa would say is that you're more likely to have some sort of life-threatening issue. You, you go and you get medical news that's frightening to you, or maybe you've had some sort of life-threatening incident in your past or in your present. It's something that she said could give you a scare, but it could also be um, an important wake-up. Why am I here? What is my purpose? What do I want to do here? Does my life have meaning? And how do I know? 
right? And she would say many physical organs, all of them, could be affected by something that's also a crown chakra issue. So I years ago, I did a, I don't even think it was an online class because it was all by phone. And I think there were some handouts and things, but Mona Lisa used to do this very in-depth class. She did one in person, which was like the medical intuition boot camp in Maine every summer that unfortunately I never got to attend. But I did do the one that she had years ago by phone. Um, I think it was in 2018 or 2019 that I took that class. And um, it, one of the things you would notice if you took any sort of workshop or class with her is that she was extremely ethical. She was really careful to let you know that your doctor is going to be the person to help diagnose you. She would describe what she was seeing, and she would tell all of her students, your job, especially as a non-physician, is not to tell people, oh, I see you have this XYZ illness, but to give an idea of the things going on, the challenging areas you might pick up in their body, in their minds, in their lives, and then refer them to the right person. And um, even though she was a physician herself, she was really, really thoughtful about that. And I always appreciated that. Um, you know, she would also, again, never tell somebody that you have, say, rheumatoid arthritis because you had a critical parent, but that these two things do tend to co occur. And you can't change your critical parent, but you can change the limits you set with them. And if they've already passed away, she would say, you can change your inner relationship with them. And maybe that would be through therapy or maybe that would be through affirmations. Because at the end of it, the day, all of our relationships with other people, helpful or harmful, affect how we feel about ourselves. And the advice she would give would range from the spiritual to what MD to consult with to what supplements or dietary changes could be helpful. And she really believed all of these things, again, were important spokes on the wheel of your health. And I agree. Um, so that's something I wanted to go over with you. I'm just trying to think of what else I wanted to share. She was such an interesting woman. I remember when I went up to Maine several years ago, um, to visit family, and we wound up um, in the Freeport area, and I wound up having lunch with her. She was just, if you had ever seen her give a talk or heard her on one of her radio shows for Hay House or elsewhere or read her books, you got the clear sense, not only of her keen intelligence and her very clear desire to be of service, but of her sense of humor. She was just a hilarious person. She was both humble and confident in an appropriate way. She was confident in what she did. Um, over the years, I, you know, a large percentage of my patients had found me because their providers referred them to me because they had been struggling with medical illnesses and a lot of times the symptoms were not adequately managed with medicine alone and even with therapy. Sometimes there is a gap. And I did refer a handful of people with the disclaimer that this may or may not be for you um, because I'm not trying to convert anybody to what I believe is helpful. Here's another option. And I have to say the people who she read for and who then shared what she found um, when they came in to meet with me after the session, she was uncanny. And in fact, even in my own life and reading, when she read for people I knew, she had picked up on medical issues, physical issues, before they showed up on standard imaging. She had picked up on dynamics in areas of my life that 
again, it would be impossible to Google even now in the internet age. I remember in 2001, I was really miserable, <laughs> or maybe it was 2002. I was really miserable where I was working. And I, you know, without me bringing it up through purely a telephone reading, things that I had kept completely to myself, she was uncannily accurate at picking up on the different personalities of people working with me, of my boss, of the challenges in working with them, and honestly, what it was doing to my health to be in a setting I really no longer wanted to be in. Um, she was uncannily accurate, and there's no way I can do her justice in my podcast tonight. Um, and I know it might sound like I'm going on and on. She passed suddenly in June and, you know, she had popped into my mind. I hadn't thought about her in a while. And I thought, oh, you know, it would be amazing to have another reading with her or even ask her if she would want to be on the show just because she had so much to share with the world. Um, I really feel like her books have been transformative for me. They have made me a better clinician. And I almost can't hear about what's going on with someone, whether it's a friend, a family member, myself, uh, a patient, without having this framework in my mind. I remember even when I was supervising doctoral students in an integrated healthcare practicum years ago now. And, you know, students bringing in their cases and talking about people's family histories or they're presenting psychological challenges. And it, it was it was pretty uncanny how given those descriptions, you know, it, it it wasn't guessing. It's a framework for having a sense of what other systems may be associated with or affected by another problem related to a particular chakra. Um, you know, and I think my students were like, oh, holy cow. <laughs> but, you know, it it wasn't me. It was so great that Mona Lisa had laid out her frameworks so clearly. Um, and again, if you had ever read her first book, which came out in the late 90s, I think, but Awakening Intuition, it was so well researched. It was so carefully documented. You could read the book and look up every single scientific article she mentioned. And there were many, many, many of them. So when people say, oh, well, that, you know, this is speculation or there's nothing to this, Mona Lisa was um, appropriately, more than appropriately credentialed, but she also did the work. She, you know, dotted the I's and crossed the T's and made it made a really clear connection to the science. And for that, I am incredibly grateful. She put a tremendous amount of work into her work. Um, so, you know, I think that's about it. I'm looking through my little notes. If you're interested in the writing of Mona Lisa Schultz, her books on her own or with the legendary Louise Hay. You can find them at Hay House. Again, Awakening Intuition, The Intuitive Advisor, which I feel like provides a, a really handy, somewhat of a shortcut to understanding the, the relationships among the chakras, uh, chakras rather, um, the body systems, spiritual issues, social issues, emotional issues. She does a really concise job of laying these out. Awakening intuition is more in depth. Um, she wrote All is Well and Heal Your Mind with Louise Hay. Again, you can find them at Hay House. If you're interested in a very basic overview of the chakras and guided imagery to balance these, my album with Hemisync, um, the foundational album, Cultivating Intuition, um, the foundation. That album is available at Hemisync, and I'll put links to all of these places um, in the show notes. But 
I'm curious to know, do, do you know about Mona Lisa? Have you read her work? Has she touched your life in some way? Was this helpful in thinking about your own health in a different way? And that's it. Thank you for listening and being here tonight. Um, it's always so great to connect. Um, I do this podcast for me and I do it for you. And I hope it's helpful. If you like the show, please remember to like, share, and follow. Leave me a comment. Let me know what's going on for you. And of course, as always, until next time, be well. Mm-hmm.